When you think of demons, you probably think of the mainstream normie names like Beelzebub, Asmodeus, Lucifer. But what if I told you there's another demon out there, a very real one that not too many people know the name of, but probably should. Smash Bandicoot. When Dante made the venture into the deepest pits of hell, there was one circle he too feared to speak on. The Smash Bandicoot cringe lair. If you look up his name on YouTube, you can't even find his channel anymore because it's buried underneath all of these videos that document his years of awful behavior and downright insanity. After taking the plunge into the deep dark rabbit hole of Smash Bandicoot, I'm pretty sure this is the same guy from 2012 that was arrested for eating a man's face off in Miami. This guy is what I imagine a real jet addict from the Fallout universe would look like if given flesh in our corporeal realm. Now I'm not going to focus on all of the allegations from the past about him, I'm going to focus on what he is currently doing, openly admitting to, and just got absolutely slapped for by YouTube. This is less of a video about Smash Bandicoot and more of a video about a huge YouTube W. So, Smash Bandicoot recently concocted a nefarious scheme to falsely copyright strike channels that he didn't like. So, he targeted a YouTuber named Cartoonchi. He flooded the channel with three copyright strikes, which then put it on the seven-day doomsday clock for Judgment Day. If you don't know how the strike system works on YouTube, if you get three strikes, you lose your channel in a week unless you prove that they're a bunch of malarkey, the, the claims aren't real. So, Cartoon G was facing channel termination, he also wasn't the only one that Smash Bandicoot was doing this to, and he, he didn't have any real grounds for striking, they were fraudulent. And he celebrated the fact they were fraudulent openly, blatantly. So apparently this guy named Smash Bandicoot is copyright striking someone that he doesn't, and he doesn't like and their account is in a bad spot right now because of it. He's, he's attempting to dox him and get his channel banned. Okay. So who is... So Smash Bandicoot is a YouTuber? Smash Bandicoot has harassed not only Cartoon, Cartoon Chi, but also myself and various other creators. This person is removing content that includes nothing he made in what is clear bad faith. And then tagging YouTube. Just spamming fucking die. Man, this guy is on, he is he is on the crack pipe. Yeah, this man's got a whole Lord of the Rings movie covering Smash Bandicoot. And I am tempted to take the plunge. This is apparently Smash gloating on one of his mini accounts that he likes to make where he's celebrating this and acting as if he's some kind of omniscient god figure who's, you know, controlling the hands of fate, the puppet master. I will not deliver the third strike, which he eventually did. This is a mere lesson. If he wants to continue making content, he can, but I will not revoke. In exchange for letting both of you get set free, however, you must tell me who are the content creators both of you have friended on Discord. Delete the recording and guide me, then I shall set you both free. For once, don't be a pathetic, arrogant, and uh, not going to continue forward there. He was trying to use these strikes as a way of getting back at people he didn't like. Now, the bad blood between all of these people in Smash goes way back over nothing. This is a mentally unwell individual that needs professional help, for sure. Uh, like I said, I'm not getting into all of the allegations over the years they've been a, a nuisance, but it is some weird, not good shit. So, this has reached the boiling point, he's harbored this grudge for four years, and then came up with these strikes. He's claiming certain things about these videos that he has absolutely no right to, and as you saw, he openly just celebrates that they're not legitimate, but he's able to abuse the system, which has been a problem on YouTube for a long time. So, obviously, Cartoon Shi and the other YouTubers that have been falling victim to this were panicking about it, thinking they were going to, you know, lose their channel or just be in, like, a terrible standing on the platform. But YouTube, in recent years, I don't know how many people know this, has really started singing a different tune when it comes to this type of exploitation. They've been pretty solid about addressing it and fixing it. It might not always be as fast as it should, but the fact that they're at least doing that is such a significant improvement. I've mentioned this case a couple times over the last few years, but in 2019, 
they absolutely teed off of a fucking douchebag's face for this type of uh, copyright strike abusing. There was a false flagger who repeatedly false flagged Minecrafters and then tried to like hold them ransom, like I'll re release the strike only if you pay me via PayPal. YouTube actually took him to court and slapped him with 25k right to the goddamn noggin. They took him over his knee, spanked his cheeks red with discipline, and kind of put the kibosh on that with an exclamation point, really. And in recent times, they have been stepping in and fixing problems like this. And I'm happy to say they did just that. So Cartoonshi made a post today talking about how the strikes are disappearing. Which is great. They say, my strikes are being removed, I've got one more left that should be sorted out shortly. I want to thank everyone who reached out to help and managed to spread the word. The support from the past two days has been insane. I'm tired and need sleep. And I'm sure he slept with a nice wet dream knowing that he foiled the great Smash Bandicoot's plot. And he would have got away with it if not for those meddling kids. Now, if you're at all familiar with Smash Bandicoot, then may God have mercy on your soul, you'll know one of the things that they like to do is he likes to make a ton of different accounts for many types of sorted purposes. In fact, when I briefly covered this topic on stream two days ago, within 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes, he somehow went into my chat on multiple different accounts to spam gobbledygook, just actual gibberish that he was caps locking and screaming to the heavens. How he even knew I was talking about him is beyond me, because it had been less than 10 minutes since his name left my mouth. That is how online he is all of the time. He's like the fucking NSA. It's crazy. And he has tons of accounts that he uses these things for. So the question naturally becomes, what stops him from just doing this again and striking more channels? Well, that's another thing YouTube's also been pretty good about in recent years. There have been no shortage of weirdos like Smash Bandicoot that try this. And usually when they fail, that's the end of the discussion because YouTube actually swats these flies pretty effectively. So once they deem that all of this is a bunch of baloney, they make some kind of note in their system or something because obviously they have this guy's information. And clearly, they've set the precedent of they're not afraid to go to court over these things and punish people legally, financially for it. So I'm guessing what happens is YouTube is somehow able to, I don't know, like blacklist them internally so that way they can't be submitting strike claims anymore. At least that's my little game theory on it. But usually you don't see them do this anymore. And I have to imagine that's something on YouTube's side for this kind of abuse. Which is, of course, a very good thing because pieces of shit like this should not be allowed to continue to do that. So, I just wanted to talk about this a little bit because it is one of those situations where it has a happy ending. And I'm happy to see YouTube going in this direction where they seem to really be taking these kind of matters more seriously. And I can only hope that that continues and maybe at some point down the line there'll be a more effective system in place with blocks and checks that won't allow fraudulent strikes to go through in the first place. Because it is scary to have to drum up a lot of, like, hoopla online through Twitter noise and getting people to be aware of the situation before YouTube is. It'd be better if YouTube knew right away or had a, uh, creators had a way of contacting YouTube, like, hey, look, here's the proof that all these claims are fraudulent, can, can we do something about this? Like, if there was some kind of system in place for that, It'd be better than the current one, which is, again, making it go viral on Twitter. Which is exactly what this Smash Bandicoot saga did do. Which is how they became aware of it, I imagine, through all of that. It, it Again, it's a happy ending, but I do still hope they continue to go in this, you know, upward trajectory, this, this forward direction, the right path, and continue to improve upon it. So that way it can be even more effective down the line. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about this a little bit. It's good to see that the strikes are being removed from his channel, as well as the other victims of... The, the the goddamn diabolical Smash Bandicoot here, and uh, hopefully that'll be the end of that story and he won't be trying anything else like that in the future. That's really about it. So yeah.